Android programmers, let's continue on from the last video where we looked at writing a vanilla Android app to work with geofences. What we're going to do in this video is explore how to extend the app to now utilize Oracle Mobile Cloud Services Location Based Services APIs. G'day, I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. So in the previous video, you might remember we explored how to write a simple Android application to detect a geofence, but it was based on a hard-coded latitude, longitude, and radius. Now what we'll explore in this video is how MCS can make the app much more interactive by removing all that hard coding and relying on the MCS location-based services APIs instead. So again, let's work with a real use case moving forward and return to our previous example of Chris's Emporium of Knickknacks. Our CEO, that's me, thinks it would be a great idea today when customers travel within 1,000 meters of our knickknack stores to display a message to the customer to remind them that they really should pop into our store and buy some of our quality knickknacks. To support this scenario, let's again define a place in MCS entitled Chris's Emporium. Now once created, we enter the latitude and longitude of the store against the place. Then we can define the geofence, either as a radius expressed in meters around the latitude and longitude we just defined, or a multi-sided polygon where we define the latitude and longitude of each vertex of the polygon. Now for this video and demonstration, we'll stick to a geofence based on a radius. Now as we want to show a custom message, we'll also define a custom attribute on the place to store our custom message when the mobile user enters or exits the geofence. And as you can appreciate, overall, the advantage of storing all these values in MCS is they can be changed dynamically without having to redeploy the app. Right, returning to our sample Android geofence application from the previous video, you'll remember we've hard-coded the geofence latitude, longitude and radius values. So what we're going to do now, instead, we will now derive this data from MCS using the Android SDK. We already covered in earlier videos how to introduce the MCS Android SDK into our Android applications, and we won't revisit this here. Just go and refer to those earlier videos. In turn, to use the SDK, we need to first get a handle on the mobile backend and also authenticate the user. Now, I'm going to keep it simple for this demo and authenticate anonymously, but a real application would likely authenticate a real mobile user against the mobile backend before proceeding. Now, we want to remotely query MCS location-based services REST APIs. As we've seen previously, if we look to the MCS user interface, we can see that it supports a number of different endpoints, such as querying places, assets, and devices. However, thanks to the SDK, we don't need to make raw REST calls in our mobile application. Rather, we can use the modules provided by the SDK to do the bulk of the work for us. So here, I'm instantiating a location place query object, which will allow me to remotely query Chris's Emporium as a place from the REST endpoint places query. To do this, I need to define the query criteria. As I'm interested in Chris's Emporium, I supply this as the name. The query by name is well carded, so I need to ensure I don't get any other Chris's Emporiums with a suffix returned. So I have to limit the result to one and sort by name ascending. Next, we call the async method execute that will make the remote call to the REST API places query. In the callback on complete method, if successful, a result will be returned containing the place. If not, an exception will return which we must handle. Assuming all things go well, the result contains as a property an items array of location places. Again, I know for my data only one object will return, so I just fetch index zero of the array. Next, as our goal is to retrieve the location's latitude, longitude, and geofence radius, we call the location address function, in this case returning an instance of location geocircle. What type is returned is actually dependent on what geofence type you defined in MCS place, and you'll need to code for this accordingly. With our geofence based on a radius, to retrieve the latitude and longitude from the location geocircle, we need to call the center method, returning a location geo point, which in turn allows us to extract the latitude and longitudes individually. Then, returning to the location geocircle, we can also extract the radius. Finally, we can call get attribute from key with the key of the custom attribute containing the message we defined in MCS to retrieve that too. 
with the latitude, longitude and radius in hand, we're then in a position, as we were in the previous videos, to populate the geofence, removing the hard cutting values and substituting our values retrieved from MCS. For the message, we need to pass this to our pending intent. As such, we call the put extra method after instantiating the intent to push through the message. Then, in the intent on handle intent method, we can fetch the dynamic message using the get extras method to extract the string, then output the message. Now, for demo purposes here, I'm just writing this all to logs, but you are free to display this in an alert or whatever else you need to do in your application. So, with our changes in hand, we can then test this again. Let's change the latitude and longitude values in MCS first to prove we are setting up a geofence in a new region. Then, if we start our app, start monitoring, and by the Android emulator custom location value, change it to a, our new latitude and longitude, you can see that the app is responding as we enter the new geofence circular region. If we change the latitude and longitude to somewhere outside the geofence, again you see a log message raises the result as the user exits the geofence. Overall, working with geofences and beacons is a breeze with the MCS Android SDK, removing the unnecessary hard cutting app and leaving you time to focus on how you're going to use geofences for the benefit of your users and your business, rather than focusing on how you get geofences to work in your code. I hope this video has been useful. I hope to catch you in another one of our videos very soon.